Hey there, plotters, and welcome to Just Right Already, the short show for new authors to create pop fiction that means something. It's filled with tips, real-life stories, and advice that may or may not be good depending on the episode. <laughs> We're helping you break free, get better, and write wilder so that readers can't put your story down, even if they should. Dominic is an aspiring Microsoft icon and a demented child. <laughs> Katie is our infamous prince, charming apprentice, and a gifted napper, but not really. No, that's the napping part's true. Oh. <laughs> We're novel writers and story lovers who really need to stop talking and get back to writing. Today's show is about plotting, uh, something that I think 50% of us don't want to touch, and then the other 50% are still trying to figure out. Um, so we're going to talk about something called the Hero Goal Obstacle trinity but before we get into that katie what are some of the problems that people have around a plot so first of all it's just not having one right uh i think and mm -hmm. i think that a lot of people um you know they have a cool idea for a story maybe or a cool idea for a world i see a lot of it where people have these really cool world building ideas for these fantasy worlds but there's no plot as in there's no hero goal obstacle the audience doesn't have any reason to stick with the character stick with the world because it's it, you know it's going nowhere mm -hmm. yeah i think that on the one hand we can sort of cut ourselves some slack because maybe we just want to have fun and we just want to write something and like you said there's a cool idea a cool character or we've seen a we've got a cool scene in our minds that we want to write but then when it comes to taking our story a little more seriously and we want people to actually enjoy it and stick with it the whole way through, then we have to start considering things like, where is this going? What is the point of it all? Um, mm -hmm. Now, maybe you're writing a French deconstructionist novel, and then the point is to be pointless, but most people don't want to read that sort of thing. Only, you know, artists might. For, and, and if you're listening to this podcast, it is about popular fiction, which means you want most people to want to write it. So there are certain key points that... You kind of need to hit, and you kind of need to hit them quickly, whether you're writing a novel or a short story, because if you don't do it right, people will just sort of get bored and turn off and not keep going. And that's a real shame because you had an awesome ending lined up, um, hopefully because you did because you actually created a plot. Uh, what's our, what is that special trinity of hero goal obstacle, Katie? Yes, so this is critically important. Uh, when I was taking story classes at JP Catholic, our professor, Professor Riley, would, this was so important to him, it was a question on every single test that we did. He would just ask it at random to victims during the class. Uh, he would say, what is a story? And we knew it so well, we could just say it without even thinking. A story is a hero's struggle against an obstacle to reach a goal. If you don't have those three elements, a hero, whatever it is they're trying to achieve, and whatever obstacles that come in between, uh, you only have a French deconstructionist uh, masterpiece that none of us are smart enough to understand. Well, what if you're writing, what if you want to write a series and, and the obstacle isn't coming, you know, because it's after you hit the gates of Mordor a thousand pages later. I mean, does it still hold? Well, I think it depends. I mean, it. You know, I, I think what you got to do is you got to keep your you got to keep your reader interested. So first of all, there can be a number of goals, right? So if you're doing a series, each you know each book in the series or each story in the series can have its own hero, goal, and obstacles. Uh, or you can have it be where the whole series has a hero goal and obstacles, but you got to keep those obstacles coming to keep it interesting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Keep uh, keep the obstacles. I like that one line where it's like, our job as writers is to force our characters up a tree and then throw rocks at them. <laughs> it's so sad, but it's true. Yeah, and it's you know it's kind of funny. Um, early on, I would write my characters, and then I wouldn't really want to do too much to them. Uh, it's like, I wanted things to be okay. I wanted them to be safe and so on. Now, as I get older, I'm like, what do I got to do to have this guy heaving breath, struggling to breathe? He's bleeding out at the end of the story. It's like, yeah, I want to get my character to that. What do I need to do? Because then it's like, then you start to see, whoa, this character has resilience. He's fighting for something serious. 
actually, what is he fighting for? I don't even know. Maybe you need to stop pantsing this thing and, and start plotting it. So with that, what is the difference between pantsing and plotting? <laughs> yeah, so plotting is you're at, is your adding a structure to your story so that it progresses and it gains speed. It gains momentum as you go forward. So not only do you want stuff to be happening in your story, right? For the plot to be moving forward somehow, you also want to slowly increase the speed. So by the time you get to that midpoint of your story, like it can kind of slowly, slowly build to the midpoint. And then at that midpoint, everything after that's gotta be an adrenaline rush to the end. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I know there are some people who are like, no, I, I can't know the end. I like to discover the end along with my my characters. Can you be kind of a pantser, just flying by the seat of your pants, um, oh. with this hero goal obstacle? Or Absolutely. does that take away the fun? Absolutely. Edgar Rice Burroughs did it. <laughs> Um, there's a, you know, whole, uh, genre, you know, serial stories do it, but the key is, right. You still got your hero goal obstacle. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're doing a serial, right. Or if you're trying to discover the end, uh, with your readers, those chapters that come in between or those stories that come in between each of them should be a small story in that package. Right. So they don't have to achieve their ultimate goal. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe their ultimate okay. goal is to defeat the big mage villain. But for this mm -hmm. scene, their goal is to just get into this building and steal a MacGuffin. Right. <laughs> so that's that's Sweet. just the plot for this scene. <laughs> What's a MacGuffin for those who don't know? A MacGuffin is a term I think that Hitchcock coined or he used it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's something that it doesn't matter what it is. It's just what everybody in the story wants. So it's yeah, like the briefcase. Yeah, yeah, it's like the briefcase with the government secrets in it. Who cares what mm -hmm. they actually are? We just know that everybody wants it. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like, um, what was it? The rabbit's foot in uh, Mission Impossible 3. Never actually defined, but everybody is panicking. And so, okay, we got to <laughs> you know, yeah, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's important to the characters. So why don't we just quickly define what is a hero? Is it just whoever is telling the story? Can somebody else who, like, what's the definition of a hero then? Yeah, so a hero, or you could also say protagonist, because maybe mm -hmm. they're not heroic depending on your story. Uh, you know, this is the person who has the goal, whose life somehow gets disrupted mm -hmm. uh, and has to find a way to put things back in order. Uh, this should be a person usually who I'd say they're either very driven or they're really forced into solving their problem. Mm -hmm. So they can't, they're the type of person who by the time you get them going, they can't just ignore the problem and go back to their normal life because it just mm -hmm. e keeps coming up or they're just so determined to solve it mm -hmm. that they drive the story forward. Yeah, I, there's a fantastic podcast out there called Writing Excuses. And if y'all are not listening to it, please go check it out. It's the fastest way to level up your writing craft. I love those guys. Um, they will often come back to this key point. Protagonists need to protag. They need mm -hmm. to be driving the story forward. There's, I mean, you've seen this in, in TV shows and whatever. There is nothing more frustrating than a main character who just does nothing. And everything mm -hmm. happens to them and they just kind of react. And it's like, why am I even watching this story? It's like a shortcut to boredom mm -hmm. uh, because they, the, the reason why you're following this person in the story, like you said, they may not actually be heroic at first or maybe at all, but you're following them because they're the ones to whom everything is happening perhaps, or they're the ones making the decisions and they're responding. And, and that's what makes a story interesting. Nothing will kill a story faster than just a, main character doesn't do anything and just thinks about things constantly and observes and just reacts and emotes, but isn't doing something to change it, you know? And I think that comes to the second point, which is the, um, the goal. How do you get a protagonist to protag? It's to have a goal. So what, what is the definition of a goal? Yeah. A goal is anything that the protagonist wants. And that can be anything from the magical MacGuffin uh, he mm -hmm. wants to be, it could also be like he wants self-fulfillment can be a goal that can be an abstract goal. He mm -hmm. wants to defeat the bad guy. He wants to get out of poverty. You know, whatever whatever that thing is that the hero wants uh, is what the goal is of the story. And, and he's got to want it really bad. And that's the thing, right? Sometimes goals can change. And if you're, you're telling a longer story, maybe a novel, um, 
chapter one. It's like, it doesn't matter what's happening in that chapter. The guy, person, girl, needs to want something, even if it's a donut across the hall. Give them something to want and then throw up a problem that stops them from getting it to start getting that kind of reaction, getting them to start functioning like a, like a protagonist. And then three chapters later or you know, at another point in your story, then introduce maybe a bigger, more important goal. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes you have the same goal right from the beginning. Like I said, Mission Impossible 3, his goal is I have to save my wife right mm-hmm. from the beginning. Um, so sometimes it's good to have a nice, clean, single-minded focus and your character does everything. And sometimes your character doesn't know exactly what they want, but what they do want in the short term, they have to want it enough to get up and do something. So that comes into obstacles. Uh, what's wrong with just being able to walk across the hall and get that donut or just walk into the bad guy's office and rescue your wife back? Why is that boring? Well, because then that's not a story. That's just your life, right? Like, <laughs> I mean... Wish fulfillment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wish fulfillment, right? Like, if, if I could just walk across the street and get a donut, who would want to watch that? Mm-hmm. Um, it has to be hard for them to get they have to earn it right Mm -hmm. if you like for example let's do let's do a romance for example you have the couple uh they meet each other they fall in love they get married okay that's really sweet uh that's very nice for them i don't really you know care about that at all but Mm -hmm. if if they meet if you know the guy gets drafted into the army and then he gets lost and the girl like has to find him and she has to like crawl through the swamp and everyone's telling her oh he never existed in the first place you're crazy and there's all this stuff happening like oh sheesh yeah <laughs> yeah how hard how hard can you make that and then at the very end she gets him back and then they kiss and you're like yes i was rooting for this you feel like they earned it right mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah ah oh, there's nothing i love so much as having a story and then knowing the ending or knowing the points that they actually need to make so that the story moves forward. And then you spend time deliberately sending them down rabbit holes or throwing red herrings or having them reach wrong decisions uh, that, that sort of take them away from that end goal. But that's actually the cool thing about having a plot is you can throw up obstacles really to get the character to, to one, do stuff, two, kind of develop their inner life or grow in in resilience or in heroics or meet other people or discover the world or discover themselves and you can kind of do that kind of like you know flailing around with your plot um but you can do that knowing that you have an end that you're always driving towards and i think you can always tell in a story when somebody is just flailing around with the plot and having fun and you're like i don't i just don't know where this is going as opposed to somebody who is, you know, breaking rules and doing all kinds of things. But it, there's still a sense of like, oh, we're going somewhere. We're making progress towards something, you know. And that's that's the magic of a plot, even if you're pantsing along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So what would be, uh, in wrapping up, a number one tip that you'd recommend for somebody who's like, yeah, I'm not sure I can plot just yet, maybe, or, or I've already you know, I just want to write. I don't want to have to think too hard about it or something. What would you say to them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really depends on what you're going for, right? So Mm -hmm. if you are just writing for fun or just for your friends, you know, do whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. If you want people who aren't your friends to read the story, you really have to have some sort of a structure. And I would start by just listing who is your hero, What is their goal? If you don't know what the goal is for the whole story, then what is the goal for this scene? And then just write a list of, you know, one to five obstacles that come in between them and their goal. And that's your structure. That's structure 101 right there. There we go. So thank you, uh, dear listener, for joining us today. Thanks for skipping your, I don't know, your plot exercises, which you could have been doing but you were listening in instead half the time as we've said before we don't know what we're going to say but it's got to be good because your writing life depends on it well obviously not really one of these episodes might just explode your brain with an idea you'll write a story and completely change your life hopefully (laughs) not for the worse well yeah some of these did for us Uh, so let us know what you think and hey rate us five stars 
If you don't, we'll come up with an overly complicated and sinister plot to destroy you. <laughs> now that we're done, you can begin. So subscribe to this podcast at catholicauthor.us. And now, just, just right, right already. already.